Hallelujah. We want to thank you once again for joining us again this evening as we do our Bible enrichment. Um, thank you for coming in. And we want to just thank Pastor Slater again for allowing us a chance, allowing me a chance to be able to come and um, teach, his, teach God's word to you all. So just glad to have you back again this evening. And last week we were talking about choices, you know, something that we can teach and preach about for the next 10 years if we need to. I tell you, because choices are everywhere in the Bible. I, I mean, any book, any person, or anything that we do, it's choices. So as last week, we were, before we got into choices, we were talking about foundations, and we need to make sure that we have our foundation founded on God and his word. And just knowing that everything we do for God is going to last. So just think about the choices that we make and Think about the things and the opportunities that we have in choices that we make. So um, I, we left off last week. We were talking about a question, too. I asked the question about who is God to you? And I was just thinking about that, pondering on that, you know, for a couple of days. And it was just like we know that he's holy. You know, we, we, we know that God is good no matter what because first he gave his only begotten son. He's patient with us. He's righteous. He's self-sufficient. God is just so marvelous. And we have some attributes of the devil, too, but we don't even like to think about that because we're not focused on what he's doing. We're focused on what God is doing in our lives. And I, I want to step back and tell you all this evening, you know, one thing we have to do, we have to let um, people be who people are. And we have to know things, who things are in our own lives. And the reason why I tell you that, because last week I was telling you about we, 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 we look at the devil sometimes and think that he's weak and this and that. And, you know, um, he's something else, okay? He, he, he is something else. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and he wants to destroy our lives. So we have to look at him as who he is. Um, we have to we turn around and you have to look at a snake. Okay, we know who a snake is. A, a snake come and, and he slithers and, and what he do? He, he'll wrap you up and, and squeeze you and, and try to attack and kill you. And, and you have to look at a dog. A, a, dog is a, a dog is who he is. What does dogs do? Dogs bite. Dogs, you know, protect. It's it just who, who we look at, who things and people are in our own lives. And we have to quit, you know, looking at people as something else in our lives. And what I mean about that, a person could be one way, but if you portray them to be another one and they show you something exactly who they are, you need to stand on who they are. We, we can't step back and, and, and make somebody, we want somebody to be another way, but that's not who they are. That's either who God made them to be or either who they chose to be and not to be in God. So, I was reading um, last week, and, and it came upon me because we were talking about just do it. I, I brought it to you about just doing it. And what we're going to do, we're just going to do God's will and do it in his way. And, and I was reading about a guy named Gary Gilmore, and they made him like an international criminal or, or whatnot. It was back in the 70s. And it kind of just caught me on about what happened. And he had, I guess, murdered some people and robbed some banks or whatever he did. And um, I was just looking back, and then when he went to jail, and they, he told them that he wanted to die. So the firing squad came and was about to kill him, and they asked him, what was your last final words? And his last final words was, let's do it. I was like, okay. So he made a command on what he wanted. He, he wanted to die no matter what, and that, to him to do that, that brought on the choices that he made in his life. So I was like, wow. He made a, a phrase, let's do it. And it had me to lead to find out that's where Nike got their slogan from, just do it. And I was like, wow, how did they get that from that? Now, it was back in the 70s when they had it. And um, that was coming upon the guy's Gary Gilmore's choices that he made. And see, Nike come because just do it. Nike made that. 
in, in um, order to help women's rights. It started off about women doing sports, about women's rights, about women want to have their, their um, say-so, their, their voice and things. So that's where that came from. And, and it kind of just threw me off. I was like, wow, how did they get from let's do it to just do it? And see, today I'm not, uh, this evening I wasn't talking, I wasn't telling you that to tell you how much money they made about the slogan or, 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 you know, the things that the young man had did in his life because we have choices on our own. But it come back to make me look at the center part on, around how we make choices in our decisions. But guess what? When the circumstances comes after we make them, what do we do then? The young man had a choice. He didn't have to die because he had a choice to go to prison for the rest of his life. And he would have still had his life, but he chose to let's do it. And he chose to, um, chose to have his life executed. So um, when I teach and I, and, and I come and talk to you all, first thing I'm doing, I'm, 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 I'm really talking to myself, you all. Okay, and I don't want to put it too fast. I'm talking to myself because of things that I go through, I have been through, and you know, you can tell some people things that you have been through, they may not have been through. So if I've been through something you haven't been through, that don't mean that I'm lying or, or, or it's not the truth. It's just that's what I've been through, and I can tell you my decision or my choice to help you out in the future. Because if you have not been through something and someone can tell you something to help you out, sometimes we need to take heed and listen to those things because they can help you out in your future to help you make a better choice. <laughs> Whether it's good, it's bad, whatever the choice is, that's the one we have to make. But we all want to do better in life. And it just always, like I said, depends on the choices that we make. You know, it, it, it helps us to kind of change um, how we're going to do things. I want to ask you this. Who's making the change in your life? Is it God or is it the devil? See, 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 reason why I ask you that, because, see, we look at choices. We'll look at choices and things in the Bible, what people have done in the Bible, and be like, oh, they made them messed up choices. I didn't know way I would have did that. Or I wouldn't treat God like that. I wouldn't do that. Let real life things come into your life today or, or, or your life this week. Let real life choices come when, when, when we don't know what to do or something comes when, when we are not prepared for it. Personal situations. Let me help you out. And I'm just, I'm just slowing it down with choices because, because I want you to get this. We, we, we're into the, in here to help one another this evening, not to point no fingers that let you know you made a bad choice and you did something bad or I messed up. No, we're coming to help each other with real life choices because we can't ever say what we will do or we won't do. Because let a real life choice come in and somebody playing with your money. See, I'm going to bring it to, to real life choices, okay? Okay? Let somebody play with your money you done worked hard for and saved up all this whole year. And you got it set right there and you got something to do with you. And, and somebody come and, and steal it or take it over. Whatever how they do. You going to sit here and tell me you're not going to get excited or upset or something about your life savings going. And you ain't had nothing to do with it. You could have made an investment or something. And it went sour. And now you don't have nothing. But you're going to tell me the choice that you make is still going to be happy, dandy, go lucky. Let somebody mess with your kids, hurt your child. Come on, let somebody kill your kid or you had death in your family. Somebody shoot your house up or something go on. You finna tell me that you all smile? You finna go hug them and say, I forgive you? We gonna be real in here this evening. Come on, we are, it's, it's choices that we make and we have in our own life that the choices that we make, it hinders us sometimes. It helps us sometimes. But sometimes it puts us in a situation where you can't do nothing to get out of it. The only thing can help you is God Almighty. And then if he don't step in at the time that he ready to do it, it won't be done. Let somebody come and disrespect you. See, I'm telling you about real life, things we go through every day, 
everyday choices, everyday battles that we don't really get to talk about because when you talk about things like this, people start walking away and want to get out of it. But see, we need to talk about it and be able to help one another because if I've been through something that hurts me or, 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 or then did me in a wrong way or disrespect me and it haven't happened to you yet, I can help you get out of that. We can talk each other through it. Iron sharp is iron. But we got to quit pointing a finger and, and quit letting other people know that you are so big and you're so good and you didn't got it right all through the years and all through the days and stuff hadn't happened at your household yet. Hmm. It didn't got so bad. It didn't got so bad that now somebody can step on your shoe, call you a bad word. Do, do, I mean, I mean, I mean, just do some things, even just look at you crazy out the window. It's so much violence and so much hatefulness and so much, I mean, not love that, that people, we go against each other so bad right now that you know that we know you can't plant oranges and get apples. So what make you think you can be hateful and God going to send somebody, somebody that keep loving on you? It ain't no happen like that. Ain't no say you ain't no be loved, but guess what? When, when you reap what you sow, things what you do and the way you treat people, don't forget somebody going to come and handle you the same way. But one thing we do, we still have choices. We have choices that we can make. You can still be that same one to mistreat someone and hurt someone, and then you have a choice not to. You have the choice to, to love on someone when you have an opportunity it don't matter if it's your kid, your family member, your parent, your spouse. It don't matter. God still looks at our heart when we, does, when we do things. And if we do it out of hatred and do it and we have the wrong motive when we're doing things, what make you think that that same thing not going to come around to your household and it might take you out? It might not hurt you like you hurt them. You might die. But see, now... God chose us, but he allows us a decision, a choice. He gives us a choice. He don't, he don't come, God's a real gentleman. He don't come and tell you, you got to choose me. You got to make this choice. No, he gives us a choice. We can choose him. We can choose the end. We can choose whatever we feel like choosing. But is your choice going to be for God to do the right thing, to help your life, to have eternal life with him? Or is your choice going to be to do whatever you feel, just a good feeling right now, and it don't matter where your, your, your soul going? You got to feed your spirit, man, every chance you get an opportunity. I, I don't care how it goes or how it looks. You're not feeding your spirit, man. Guess what? Your earthly man going to end up taking over. And when that earthly man take over, guess what? Catastrophe comes. Because let me show you what a choice is. A choice is an act or selection of making a decision. When forced with two or more possibilities. See, you got one or two more choices on um, possibilities. It's on you or what's on, which one you want to choose. Let's pull up Deuteronomy 30, 15 through 18. And we're still talking about choices and decisions. Like I said, we, we can talk about choices and decisions for the next 10 years. And we can still find something different or something on there that we can teach about, preach about, or, 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 or just talk about. Because every, I don't care what page you turn to, everything in the Bible had a choice with it. Deuteronomy reads, listen closely, I have set before you today life and prosperity, good and death and adversity, evil, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God to walk, that is, to live each and every day in his ways, keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, precepts, so that you will live and multiply and that the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you are entering to possess. See, that life or death thing, see, see, still a choice. You can choose life or you can choose death. You can choose to live for God and you can choose to die with the enemy. 
It's upon you how you want to choose it, how you want your life, how you want to move, how you want to escalate with, uh, and, and move up. We have the choice. God, God does not, he did not send his son for us to be sad, depressed, feeling lonely, feeling down, feeling bad. How can he send, send his son that we feel that way and God said he is a God paid love? Y'all show me what love is when love becomes sad. When love becomes sad, when somebody that hurt you, you still that that still hurt. But God says He's love. He's a God paid love. He don't want us in no distress. He don't want us in none of that. He told us to cast our cares on His Son Jesus Christ. So when we're going through something, we can't work it out on our own anyway. But one thing God allows us to do, He allows us to cast our cares on Him. When we're going through it, he allows us to give it to him because he's the only one can work it out on our behalf, no matter how you feel about it. God is the only one can pick you up, hold you up, and won't let your feet hit the ground, and still you victorious no matter what you've been through. It don't matter. See, you got to have that in your heart. You got to have the Holy Spirit inside of you, knowing that whatever you go through, God still has your back. He still has your best interest. He still loves you unconditionally. And it reads, I declare to you today that you will certainly perish. You will not live long in the land which you cross the joy to enter your possess possesses. If you don't, if you don't put your, your everything into God and you don't tell God, look, I, I, I surrender to you. I, I, I'm nothing without you. I can't do, I, I'm nothing without you, God, and I, I need your help through everything that we do. See, there ain't nothing new under the sun. Why you say that? People in the Bible still had choices. Just like we do today. No matter how we feel, no matter how your emotions kick in, if we don't choose wisely, you don't ask God for his wisdom. <laughs> it's going to be consequences. Everybody know what a consequence is? Come on, it's a result or effect of an action or condition. Consequences come on our own decisions. It's an effect or action that's going to happen the way that you choose, the way that you walk in, the way that your mindset is sending what you're going to do. How you going to do it. The way that you, you want to see things in. See, that comes back to our will. When we want to see it, yeah, we're walking in our will the way we feel in our emotions. But, our, but we need to be straight walking and, and getting God's will at all times. I ain't sitting here telling you that you're going to be perfect. I ain't sitting here telling you every time, every decision you'll make that things are going to go the way that you want it to go. No. In the, in the Bible, you got to look at this. And, and this, like, I was like, wow. And we have so many small things going on in our lives where, you know, we look at other people and we think that, hey, we, we okay. But in the Bible, you got to look at in Abraham. Abraham had to make one of the hardest decisions and choices in his life. He had to either choose God right then. Or choose not to do what God told him to do. And then there was, there was something in the Bible that really, really got Abraham where, where, where he needed to be. Because it's so hard, you all. You know, we can, we can go with choices. And, and like Abraham, Abraham had to true, choose and trust God or spare his son Isaac. Now we're going to sit up here and say, Abraham crazy. And, no way I would have did that. My son, my, we, look, God, only but God's son, and he gave his son. He chose us right then. There was Isaac, Abraham's son, and guess what? Sometimes we had three, four, five, ten children. Okay. Let somebody hurt one of them or do something or, or tell somebody you got to kill one or, 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 or something got to happen or you can choose God. And, and, and you can just kill him. Man, there be so many folks um, not choosing God right now. See, see, we still talk about everyday actions and choices. Because Abraham was the, what, what the what, father of all nations. Okay, he had to kill his only son. Well, he, he didn't kill him. But this is what God, 
See, God allowed him to make a choice. Are you going to choose me? Are you going to have eternal life? Are you going to come and choose me and say, we ain't worried about that. I give you 10 more sons. Who are you, who you going to choose this day? In the same choices that we have. And then, oh, God, you're so awesome. I thank you so much. Oh, my God. The question I want to ask now, how much do we truly trust God? How much do we truly trust him? How, how, how much do we truly put in God to trust him and see what he's going to say? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust is a big word, you all. And this evening right here, when we're talking about choices, consequences, you're going to already know trust sits in the middle. The Bible reads, trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight or understand. Stop right there. We do it all the time. God will have us to do something. Have us tell us to do something. We got we to gotta make sure that we hear the voice of God and know his voice. We are children. The Bible says children know his voice. When God tells us to do something, we have to take heed and do our best to try to do it. But you know what we'll do? Because of, because of we're emotional beings and because of our feelings that we can be hurt on the inside, we'll choose something that, you know, helps us. So, so-called helps us. At that point of time, we feel like we're being helped because, because maybe um, you're going through something, a, a relationship. Let's put a relationship. You're going through a relationship where you're putting your all into it, but somebody's putting 50% into it, and you feel hurt. So you're not, you'll try to lean on the God, but if God is not moving on this person as fast as you need him to, guess what? You'll lean a little bit on your own understanding. You'll start doing things and making decisions that make you feel good, but won't have a relationship exactly where you God wanted to be, it'll be what you wanted to be. Guess what will start um, happening then? We'll start, you'll start breaking up. You'll start making decisions not for a family or not in one like in a marriage. You'll start making single decisions. You'll, your children will start going against you. They'll start fighting. I'm with mama and with daddy. That's some stuff when we're leaning on our own insight, on our own regulation of things, how we feel, what we want, how we want it. But that ain't what God say. He said, in all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize who him. He said, and he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. Let me show you something. God have us already set up, our life already set up so smooth and so good that if we just walk in his word, no, it's not going to go like we want it all the time. But if we just walk and we trust him and say, look, God, I, I don't know how to do it. See, this, that, that's that personal relationship thing that come with it. God, look, I don't know. See, 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 we're so scared of talking to God and telling God we don't know how to do something and acting like we know how to do everything on our own. You don't know how to do everything when, when you became God. See, when we walk and ask God, God, look, I, I don't know how to do it. Please help me and show me your Holy Spirit lives on the inside of me. And if I make this decision on my own, guess what? I'm going to be right back here again and say, God, I need your help again. But come in the trusting part, the understanding. Come in knowing that. That's why I said, how much do we truly trust God? When, when, when he tell us something, how much do we, we really walk in his word? When he show us something, the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us, how much do we truly go exactly and do how he wants us to do it? This is what I wanted to say. Do we trust money? Oh, or do we trust God over our money? For the love of money is the rule of all evil. We can spit that all day and holler it all day. Let somebody take your money. Let somebody play with your money. See, we, see, we, you know, we have to be real life stuff. You will make a choice of decision you never thought you were making your life. You will hurt somebody you never thought you would hurt. You will tell somebody or cuss somebody that you never thought you would say something to. 
We got to know. First Timothy 6 and 10. I just told it, but you know, y'all. <laughs> but it's, it reads for, for the love of money. And I wanted to read it out of the Amplified for you. For the love of money, that is the greedy desire. For and the willingness to gain it unethically. See, we have to read that scripture and read different types, of, you know, the Amplified, because it breaks it down a little more for you. Then it said, is a root of all sorts of evil. And some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves through and through with many sorrows. Meaning that when you put money first, you forget about God. We can say we don't. Like I said, let some come up and, 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 and it depends on your money putting into it. Sometimes we make decisions for money. It ain't the best decision to make. But that's when your personal relationship kick in. You have to ask God, Lord, you really need to help me right here. Because um, in, in the past, I've chosen money and I did things that, that I need help with. And then if it come up again, I don't know if I choose it then. God, help me. See, we have to have a relationship to ask God to help you, to show you the way. Lord, show me that I choose you first. You say you, you are my only source. We don't need nothing else. When you got God, God said he can give you the desires of your heart. He'll give you whatever you ask for. He already want, know what you need before you even want it. Look at your careers. God said he's self-sufficient. It don't matter what your career you put yourself in or, or what you do or how you try to do it. If God is not in the forefront of that thing, if God is not the one walking, put, putting you exactly where you need to be, that career could last for 10 years, and it seems like you still ain't did nothing in it. You ain't got nothing to show for it. You ain't, you ain't got no money set. You, nothing. Because the simple fact, we put things before God. Families. We, we, we put our family before God. We, we do that. And, and, and in us doing that, guess what happens? We start fighting. We start having disagreements. And I ain't just talking about husband and wife. I'm talking about brothers and sisters, siblings. I'm to my children. I'm to my cousins. I'm to my anybody that you put before God. I will tell you right now that if you don't seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how good you look. I don't care what. You still going to fail at what you're doing because God is not the forefront of what you got to be doing. That's that family. I love you. Have a good day. All this old good stuff we tell folk. And then come around and get mad. You everything but the child of God. You sure enough will be something then. You can have a trillion dollars. Make one mad. That'll make you feel like you ain't got zero. Your future. See, one thing about God, he is our future. I don't care what nobody say. If we don't ask God for his wisdom, if we don't ask God to, 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 to help us out through everything that we do, being wise like Joshua, y'all, we don't make it. I don't care how smart you think you are, 50 degrees, the best uh, manager, pastor in the world, the uh, best, richest man in the world. Pastor was just telling us, uh, one of the, I remember the Bible study or, or, or morning service, it's hard for a rich man to go through the, the, eye of a, the, 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 the needle, the, the camel to go through the eye of a needle because we don't want to let that money go. I ain't sitting here telling you all that, you know, don't make money and, you know, well, hey, that, let me show you something. Money is a tool just like food, like your clothes. Money is here to help you to live, not to be your God. You can eat food for your physical body, not your God. Pull up Matthew 6 and 3. See, I don't, I, I, I don't care what we try to put before God. Anything you try to put before God, it backfires on us. 
it, it, it'll hurt, hurt us in a way. Well, y'all know that's my favorite scripture too. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it helps us in a way where every time we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, God said he's going to add everything to us. He's the multiplier. God said he'll add things to us. He'll give us and do things for us from, from that we can know, act, or think. God said you can think about some. I already worked that thing out for you. But are you going to put me first? Are you going to put me over whoever you love? Are you, are, are you going to put me in front of something that your heart got? Are you, are you going to put me over that spouse and them kids knowing that what I, you do for me is going to last? See, we got to keep trusting God in everything we, that we do because guess what God is? Faithful. God is so faithful. Faithful, I mean, he's faithful in everything he do, everywhere he sent us, everything he do for us. However, he, whatever God do, he is faithful in what he do, and he is just. So in trusting God, he help us to make better decisions and choices in our lives. But we got to ask ourselves, how do we get to kingdom building? Mm. It's called godly decisions, wisdom. And we got to know, we got we to we have that, that spirit of Solomon. You know, remember, Solomon came in, and, and Solomon could have asked for anything he wanted. He could have asked God for anything, but he asked God for his wisdom. He asked God to give him, to teach him how to, 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 to um, lead his people. And God said, you know what, since you asked me for that, I'm going to make sure and give you everything else and anything you want. And that's what God does for us, you all. Anytime we ask God for anything or, 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 or we trust him and we just know he's holy, he's almighty, he said he'll truly give us the desires of our heart. But I want to tell you this on this evening. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything going to be added unto you. And I'm going to show you that making choices the choices that we make in our lives, we're going to help each other next week as we come and give you all of, of, of everything you need to help you make the godly choice, the godly decision, and we'll do it the godly way. So I pray your week is blessed. And next week we're going to talk about how do we get through making these godly choices to get ourselves to kingdom building. God bless you. Have an awesome evening and an awesome week.